Hello and welcome to the Poor Hammer Podcast, episode 47. I'm your host, Brad. This is my co-host, Eric. How's it going? And we have an interesting episode this week. We're on our break, but the mood struck me, so I've spent many an hour setting this episode up for Eric's enjoyment. (laughs) Yeah, I've got no idea what we're doing. He was just like, hey, you're going to be able to record? And I was like, yeah, I guess I can... I guess I can do that. So without any further ado, let's jump into our mystery topic. Sounds good. All right. On this week's episode, I spent a few dozen hours in a fugue going through way too much detail so that you can all be entertained by me slowly losing my mind. How exciting. Eric, you're in the dark as to what the subject even is. People who pay attention to our YouTube channel may actually already know. Yeah, I've been busy... This this break has not been much of a break for me. It rarely is for us. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I've got no idea. This, this is going to be interesting. So I threw out a question on the Poor Hammer YouTube channel. We were celebrating we hit 2,500 subscribers. Huzzah. Hell yeah. But I also added on a poll. How many of the 21 factions in 40k do you think you can buy a 2000 point army for $500 MSRP MSRP all right so $500 a 2k point army that's tough there are 21 factions if you'd like to give your guess uh custodies jump out as likely uh i mean there's got to be a way to make space marines work just because they're space marines like i don't i don't know but i'm sure that there's enough random boxes of like there's probably a way to do space marines maybe knights but probably not i actually don't know how many like warhounds you get for prices but that might be possible you mean war dogs warhounds is an entirely different scale (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, yeah 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 um i don't think there's any other ones that would jump out to me So I had previously brought this up to the patrons just in one of the Warhammer channels, and one of them pointed out knights immediately. In the comments of the poll, multiple people pointed out knights already. So I broke it down. Uh, 80% of people currently think it's less than five armies. I would agree. Yeah. 13% of people believe it's five to 10. Meh. 2% believe it's over 10, but not to 20. With MSRP, there's no way. And 5% of hopefuls believe all but one. (laughs) I mean, I get that. Yeah, and when we started playing, it was pretty well assumed that about half the armies, more or less, you could make like 2,000 points for like 500 bucks. Yeah, something like that. And we only started two years ago. It's not like we're talking about 19 Diggity 2 here. Yeah. We're talking about 2020. Okay, so I'm assuming you've done an insane amount of research and spreadsheets and trying to figure out... I, I We're not going with, like, tournament-winning lists. We're going with, like, something that's usable, not awful, right? Okay, so let me take us into this. I'm going to start with my rules I gave myself. Okay. So, rule number one. No secondary market, no eBay, no mini swap, stuff like that. I can't tell if someone's got a killer deal. Rule number two... MSRP only, which I never recommend buying at MSRP. Yeah. On Amazon, there is a 15% discount on every single model GW makes. Like, do not buy MSRP models ever. Yeah, and, like, you can probably find better. Uh, My next rule, rule number three here, is no holiday boxes. Okay. There... Currently, it's Christmas. There are holiday boxes out. It would be very easy for me to cop out and say, hey, a week before this episode airs, if you had gotten a holiday box, you could have gotten an army for 2,000 points for under $500. Yeah, and... The good ones are gone in minutes. The bad ones are gone in weeks. Yeah, it's a good good thing to not count. Yeah, so we're only going with eternal quote-unquote boxes, things that are going to last the edition. Right. Rule number four, and this is an important one because I didn't want to cop out in this way either. No purposely expensive, unplayable model. I'm not doing a Warhound Titan. Okay, so don't cheat on stuff like that. That's fair. I'm I'm not going to buy Stompas to make Orcs 2,000 points. (laughs) Hey, man. Stompas are awesome. Screw you. And my fifth rule is a little nebulous, but it's more like an ethics rule. I'm trying to minimize points spent on, like, useless models 
not just duplicates, but like really bad things to duplicate. If you look at all the Space Marine combat patrols, they manage to shove a $75 impulsor in each one. It, it makes the box look like it's a better value, but owning two impulsors kind of sucks. Owning three impulsors is nearly useless. Owning four <laughs> impulsors is actually useless. <laughs> yeah, so that's we're, fair. So we're going to try not having multiple impulsors. With our rules in place, here's our goal. You need 2,000 points for $500. We need to average four points per dollar. Okay. This sounds doable at first. Yeah. I mean, like the first thousand points, not too difficult. Yes. It comes down to a couple things. So when I put it in perspective like that, certain people are probably like, oh, cool. This is definitely pretty easy. Other people who have seen what MSRP is on most armies just went, oh, Wait. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, looking at you, Admac. It gets worse. So <laughs> there are certain armies that weren't even worth calculating. They were so bad. Yeah. To get into the actual how many there are, there are only four armies that you can do okay. this with, with my rule set. That's not bad. I mean, it's not good. It's worse when you find out who the armies are. Ah, okay. <laughs> So we can talk about some of the ones that failed before we get into the main four. Well, okay. Let's talk about who didn't make it. Uh, these are honorable mentions for people who got close. Okay. So one of them is demons. Demons got ridiculously close. Really? That's not one I would have thought of at all. The new combat patrols essentially start collecting corn. <laughs> yeah. They did a, a sneaky, mischievous play. In the original Start Collecting Corn, there was a skull cannon. Okay. The skull cannon kit is also like the Herald on Blood Throne, right? Sure. Which has a new name now I'm not going to remember. Yeah, I was like, it seems like that's not what it's actually called, but yes, yeah. So you can either build it as the Herald on foot and the skull cannon, or you can build it as the Herald on Blood Throne. In the new box... They suspiciously cut out the Herald and put it in the box without the rest of the kit. Oh. So you can only build Herald on foot. You can't put him on the Blood Throne. You can't build a Skull Cannon as a spare unit. Okay. That sucks. Yes. I thought it was a shoe in I didn't realize that there isn't a Skull Cannon in the box. Uh, so I ended up short. Even if I use like a bloodthirster kitted out with extra point or with extra money, or if I do the thing that got me closest was don't even do a bloodthirster, do Bellacor. And for like yeah. twenty dollars over budget, if you use Bellacor, who would rather have be a bloodthirster for flavor for going pure corn, uh, you could do a a soul grinder uh, as the last unit. Like five hundred and twenty dollars hit like 1900 and some spare points where you're like just shy that's pretty close yeah so demons was a bit shy i mean there is the other problem with that of like you're playing corn you're not really chaos demons you're you're corn it's just zinch is out of the question nurgle's out of the right. question slanesh is out of the question i think they should be separate armies but they are one army so technically you get what you get uh, Sisters of Battle, I knew it was a stretch. I could see that being pretty close, though. Isn't their combat patrol solid? So, yes, their combat patrol is quite good. Two of them is honestly pretty decent, uh, especially yeah. if you know how to do a little bit of modeling. Uh, if you kit bash a bit, two of those can be very good. They also have two very expensive named characters who are used universally. Right, that does help. Unfortunately, after you burn all that, you have very little left to finish it. And sisters' kits outside of those characters are gigantic money sinks. Yeah, I, I didn't know that. Sisters got to like 1,700-ish points and then fell flat because I couldn't finish it. Right. And it would actually take a couple hundred bucks to finish it. <laughs> Oof. Which, I mean, but at the same time, like, the combat patrol for sisters is like a solid option kind of thing. So like, you'd have, at 1,700, you'd get a decent option, but yeah. It's kind of two ways, because, like, it's a solid option, but you have to know those are the easy-to-build kits. They do right. not have options. You are stuck mono, like, load out what is there is what is there. If it was the full kits, it would be an amazing combat patrol. Right, because you could actually make changes. and like... Yeah, as it stands, it's kind of iffy to buy more than two of it. And, again, it 
it would be a much higher value, even if just the Sisters of Battle was a normal kit. Okay, so I mean, that it sucks that they didn't make it, but that's pretty close. Yeah. Orcs got close. I obviously could have forced it jamming a stomp in. Uh, yeah. I pulled out, like, all of the stops with orcs. I got into, like, orc kit bashing forums for, like, hey, if you've got a second war boss in mega armor, here's how you turn him into a big mech in mega armor. And, like, shit like that. Right. Like, I went deep on orcs and could not make it past, like, 1750. Uh, yeah, I was going to say, like, orcs on, like, paper sounds, like, impossible. But then I was thinking, like, oh, yeah, you can do, like, massive kit bashes and it'll be perfectly orky. But some of those kits are pretty expensive. Yeah. <laughs> so, like... It, it kind of relies you have to do Gaz to get close. Yes. And I mean, Gaz is great. So he, He's a great unit. So Oryx got closer than I thought it was going to originally, uh, but I was very sad it couldn't actually get there. Yeah. And I mean, that is with a lot of work, though, as well, like kit bashing and stuff like that. But I mean, it's in the spirit of Oryx to kit bash, so perfectly reasonable to do that. The biggest shock for me was I could not get Drukari up to 1,900 and something points and call it good. Drukari's combat patrol is, in my opinion, one of the best combat patrols out there for starting a faction. Buying two of it is like infinite money. Like, there's no waste. Buying three of it gets a little bit on the, like, we're probably going too far but you could do it if you were, like, really into the Cavalite portion of the army. Right, because that, that comes with a bunch of troops and then the boats, right? Two Is it two of the boats? It's uh one boat that is the tank boat, which is an upgrade sprue. The other boat is just the transport boat. Okay. And then it comes with an Archon, it comes with your troops, and it comes with five Incubi. Ah. Uh, and because no one ever puts people on the boats, we all just use the boat as the model. <laughs> You yeah, end up yeah, with yeah. a ton of spare Cabalites and can load out all sorts of crazy loadouts and have, like, a bunch of spare. It's how I always did my Cabalites, too. Okay. And it's, like, a famous thing. Like, Skari, the Rukari YouTube guy, uh, he has whole things about it. He's done plenty of videos on it. That makes sense. Great starting point. Absolutely easy to get to, like, 1,500 points very cheap. But then you run into Elves' problem, where, like, <laughs> our shit is cheap and, you know, like, trade pieces. They're, they're, right. they're supposed to trade up. They're very frail, low value, stuff like that. Which means, unfortunately, the dollar-to-point ratio nosedives. And then we have Votan. Ah, it's kind of cheating though, isn't it? Because like, there's not enough of it. There's not enough of it, true. Uh, my problem is, who the fuck priced these kits? Well, yeah. Holy shit, they're made of gold or something. <laughs> the Votan <laughs> kits are insane. Their, their start collecting box, the Combat Patrol, is like mediocre value, even with the fact that they all got jacked up in points. And I was like, okay, I can sort of make this work. Double call kind of sucks, but you could do the named one in a normal call. And then after that, I was like, all right, I've got a good chunk of the army with $200 to spend. The basic tank is a $110 kit. Yeah, but it's so cool. <laughs> Whoever priced Votan is a criminal. Should be, should be tried for war crimes. Yeah, it... That is expensive. Isn't the, like, smaller thing? The little transport unit thing is like an $80 kit or $65 kit or something insane. It's fairly expensive. I saw that as well and I was like, ooh. It's smaller than a Rhino, yet it somehow costs like an extra $20 over a Rhino. I You can buy a Ninja Turtles truck for like $20 on Amazon. Yeah, get out of here. <laughs> oh. So, yeah, Votan is a no, unfortunately, even with the giant point increases they just ate. Yeah, okay. To round out the Xenos, we've got Tyranids also didn't make the cut. It was kind of a long shot. I didn't even do it at first, but then someone was talking about how good value the start collecting was, so I did the math, and it just doesn't make it. And you end up with, like, 60, 70 Hormagons or, or Termagons or something, which is a lot of a single That's unit quite a bit yeah <laughs> and it's the wrong gaunt for like what's good right now technically hormagons is the good one right now and termagons aren't very good that does change so it's not important but i'm just saying like yeah it's like and it's not terrible no it, it's a playable unit but having that many it was correct in eighth edition to own 70 of them but i don't think the gw wants that yeah and that's that is the other thing is like 
it feels more and more like GW is trying to get away from the massive number of models that some armies were trying to do, you know, like orc spam. So yeah, so Nids is out. And then we get to the ones that could have been. These ones are held back by their start collectings. Okay. Death Guard, Thousand Suns, and Chaos Space Marines are criminal. <laughs> Death Guard's, like, I, I'll assume that you're right on the other ones, but, like, Death Guard's the one that immediately popped to my mind. It was like, that's just trash. <laughs> Like, Death Guard is the worst start collecting that exists. I keep calling them start collectings. They're combat patrols. Whatever. It's insane. <laughs> it honestly is insane. Death Guard is shocking that I couldn't make it work. Because Death Guard is one of the, like, in 8th edition, it was, what are the cheapest armies? It's Space Marines and Death Guard. Okay. Uh, Death Guard cannot work. It doesn't actually get close. I get stuck at, like, 16, 1,700 points. Is it just because, like, their actual kits are not expensive? Well, it's because in 8th edition, they were the Necrons. So they had 15 box sets. Okay. And they had really cheap, easy-to-build kits that mysteriously disappeared and were replaced by very expensive versions. Oof. <laughs> so you can't really do Death Guard cheap anymore. Thousand Suns has start collecting Zongor, which is very <laughs> unfortunate because Scarab Cult Terminators are so point-heavy <laughs> that Thousand Sons might have been able to get there if their combat patrol box was not actual crap. They have some, I don't know, some fetish or something like that with Thousand Sons and that model, dude. It's the sunk cost fallacy from a business perspective. It's the, we spent so much money modeling this thing and they none of them sold. We just wasted a $100,000 project. Yeah, I. it's so stupid. <laughs> like, maybe there is some people that enjoy it, but no. <laughs> <laughs> and CSM is like the, it's miserable. CSM's combat patrol is not good. Okay. So the last honorable mention here is Knights. Oh, it's an honorable mention. Ooh, shit. Knights is the one that everybody who piped up with like a suggestion of what army would be cheap went Knights. Right. I know Knights is cheap. My head tells me Knights is cheap. Well, I mean, it's just one of those like, how many models do you need to buy? Yes, and that's why people do it. It's like dollar per model instead of dollar per point. <laughs> yeah, and they're like, you only need four big knights to do it. Or you only need like a combination of two big knights, seven small knights, something like that is a usual army. Yeah. So people are like, it's such a small army. It must be cheap. Knights I had trouble getting over like 1,600, 1,700 points. Really? The War Dog slash Halvern kits are like $85 now. Ooh, okay. Okay. For for two models for like 300 points. And that's two models? I thought it was three. No, you would because their max squad size is three. Yeah. It's two models for $85. That's so dumb. <laughs> oh, God. That's awful. That's honestly awful. The big knights, you know, like your uh, knight abominant, your uh, knight paladin errant to those in the... the imperium loving gross people all of those are the same price 170 dollars msrp okay that's a bit more than i thought i mean i knew that they were all the same because like it's the same fucking model like let's be real <laughs> it's now the same price as a knight tyrant that's wild and then the war dogs are 85 for two if it was three you should be able to do it but yeah so knights also fails oh that sucks there's a bunch of other armies that weren't even worth mentioning like guard you know how i said for guard we have to get to the point where we reach four points per dollar right guard has trouble with a point a dollar <laughs> i mean there's there's <laughs> There's uh, some new stuff coming out, so maybe... No, it's worse. The new kits is horrendously priced. Uh, so we only technically have the box set, but if you look at... Like, if you just divide the box set, the, the value is horrendous. Okay. And, like, <laughs> you might be like, well, Mechanize must be cheaper, right? You're right, it's cheaper, but we're talking about now it's just an expensive army instead of the most expensive army. We're talking about, like, a 100-point tank is, like, $65. Oh, God. <laughs> like it's just an expensive army at that point the lehman russ is 60 dollars for i think 120 points and that's like one of the best ways to waste points right <laughs> to waste points yeah i see what you're saying yes yes i mean honestly i didn't have expectation of guard making it to 500 dollar but like i didn't think it would be that far off i was like oh you know, maybe like six seven hundred you know give it a couple extra hundred and like you can finagle things but okay 
Then there's Admech, which famously has like the worst combat patrol math wise. Right. Like if you're trying to get you you can't make five hundred points out of the fucker. Like it's it's not a terrible combat patrol for like it's a terrible combat patrol in every way. The models are bad, the points are bad. It's just bad. The old start collecting, again, we'll get into this when we get to the end, but the old start collecting was just better and cheaper. Fair enough. But yeah, Admech is like, don't even try. Why are we doing this? <laughs> And it's like that for a couple other armies. So let's get into the final four who actually made it. So here's our winners. These are the armies we can afford. <laughs> and again, like there's a lot of rules that you've restricted yourself on. Like there's definitely ways to get a 2K point army for under $500. Like, Absolutely. You can go on mini swap. You can go on eBay. You can find ways to do it. But like if you're not doing that and you want to just generalize, these four follow MSRP rules. Yes. I would never tell someone to buy MSRP. No. Just go well, literally on Amazon, 15% off. On eBay, cheaper still. Mini swap could be even cheaper still. So number one, we're getting getting it out of the way it's the one everyone knows is going to be the answer it's custodies yep <laughs> okay please clap makes sense so for custodies here's how we did it 150 dollars combat patrol we're buying two of them 300 dollars gone makes sense though it's a solid combat patrol it's nutty <laughs> it's one of the best it is yeah. so cool addition to that fact what makes it less points per dollar than like a bunch of golden boys would be is it adds in 10 sisters okay so you've got 20 of the only expensive model in the Custodes line in the discount box. So you're basically done having to buy that model. And it's the only one that feels bad to buy as a Custodes player. Yeah, because I mean, like, the rest of them are... Are hilarious. Well, yeah, I mean, it's just the, the elite army, so you only need, like, three. Yeah, so... <laughs> So here's what we do. Uh, with the first two combat patrols, we're going to build uh, one shield captain, one shield captain on Dawn Eagle jet bike. Uh, you turn one of the 20 sisters into a Knight Centura, which is just the named sister. There's no official model for it. You just doll one up, put her on a rock. Okay. In any other fashion, I'd say paint something gold. In Custodes, I guess the answer is <laughs> paint something not gold. Paint something golder. <laughs> Then we do five prosecutors, five vigilators, just so that we've got a couple options for our sisters. And then I'm putting nine witch seekers, which is the flamer ones. Okay. Uh, I'm specifically doing nine because then they'll fit in a rhino with the Knight Centura, who I also give a flamer officially for this because I like making the flamer bomb squad. I really like that rhino. It's a cool trick. Yeah, I mean, it does make rhinos interesting. It's a fun trick for custody players. Highly recommend. Yeah. Could do an episode about it. Anyway, so that's what we do with them. Then we've got all the rest of the guard squad. Uh, we turned one into a captain. We're going to turn four out of ten into shield, four of them into spear, and then the last guy, we're going to give the flag and have him be a flag bearer guy, which is a Vexilius Praetor. So that burns the guards there. And then we have our shield captain on Dawn Eagle jet bike. And we're just going to make the other five all be Virtus Praetor. So we've got a nice five-man squad on bikes. Which, yeah, I mean, that's pretty solid. <laughs> it's crazy value. So at $300, we're at most of an army. That's probably what, like 1,300 points, 1,400 points? It, it's a lot. So we still have money to blow. Uh, first of all, TJ, Trajan Valoris, uh, Kitten, as he is known. Kitten, fuck off. <laughs> is $42 for 200 points. Score. All right. Then we've got $55 for a Terminator squad. We'll buy two boxes for six of them. And you may say, what a ripoff. I get five in a box. Yeah, but theirs cost way more. Yeah. I'm going to turn one of them into a shield captain and give him the axe so that he can be beat stick captain that we talked about in the Custody sub-faction episode. Yeah, I think that makes sense. And then the other five, you can either do four of them as a squad and then do a fifth one who has the flag for being a terminator with the flag or you can just do all five in the squad it really is up to you because we don't care about points by the way uh <laughs> <laughs> fair enough and then as a flex i've got more than 50 dollars left over i'm going to pay msrp for a rhino yeah i was gonna say like you still you were talking about doing the rhino thing we need the rhino because yeah. that doesn't come in the combat patrol for anyone interested in starting in 40 k watching this episode never in your life <laughs> pay msrp for a rhino if you walk into a local game store and there are people hanging out you can say hey boomers can i borrow a rhino you will have them thrown at you and they will say please never bring it back 
<laughs> I don't think it's quite that, but yes. Rhinos are free. Yeah. They don't want you to know this. <laughs> <laughs> Hidden trick from GW. Rhinos are free. The kit the kit is older than the majority of our audience based off of what YouTube tells me. Yeah. And it's been in a lot of boxes. <laughs> So that's two combat patrols, the Valoris, two Termes, and a Rhino. Yes. And we are at $492 spent. And I, I didn't put tax. We're buying all of these in New Hampshire, wherever it doesn't have sales tax. Sure. So you, you've got some money left over. And here's the kicker. This is not a 2,000-point army. This is a 2,196-point army with how I have everything kitted out. So there's enough room to, like, make some changes here and there. You could just not run TJ. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> and I spent MSRP for a rhino. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I Custodius was like the obvious, like, this is definitely doable. I didn't realize how doable it was. If you don't have much money, play Custodius. There's a reason a poor soul like Henry Cavall can afford them. <laughs> yeah, that's it. They also do have the added bonus of, like, if you're going to be, like, traveling with them, there's not that many models. True. There's lots of upsides. It, it works out pretty well. And it's awesome to see that, like, there is, you know, one of these, like, cool elite armies that you can get for cheap all right let's go to the second easiest faction all right what do we got it is not space marines well some people will argue it is it's you it's gray knights yeah that's gotta be not terrible gray knights is held up by how absolutely batshit crazy that combat patrol is yeah <laughs> it is the army where i bought three combat patrols and was grinning i was gonna say like the combat patrol gives you the nemesis dread and a squad of five termies and five strikes and a librarian oh it also gives you a librarian i forgot about that i was like it was already great value without that <laughs> So before before we get into the combat patrol, I have to shout out Stefan over at One Last Blade. Hell yeah, dude. He is the reason that I made this episode. I thought it was going to be a different episode than me ranting as much as I have. But he was pointing out that the Grey Knight combat patrol is so good, it's hard to build a 500 point army out of it yes i do remember that being one of those like how do you actually put it to 500 points just because like terminators are so many points god forbid if your friend is playing ad mech and you <laughs> both buy a combat patrol get wrecked idiot <laughs> man this game is wildly unbalanced <laughs> i mean it kind of is but like that's that's like 600 points versus like 200 points oh 600 eric <laughs> You think it's 600 points? I mean, it all depends on what you equip it with. My my default build for your first combat patrol is 835 points. Damn. That is the, like, quote-unquote correct way to build the combat patrol, in my opinion. Like, how I would build it if I was trying to maximize the box for... Yeah. For gameplay. Not even for, like, trying to maximize the amount of points I get. No, it's like, I mean... I, they kind of do go hand in hand because like you're gonna grandmaster and nem dread yep you're gonna you're gonna kid out the terminators because like you have terminators uh, terminators no 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 i'm kidding out paladins eric oh you're going to paladins i have strike squads so i don't need troops right so anyway to, to get into the rest of this my final list is i literally just bought three combat patrols yeah <laughs> We use the librarian as a librarian give him gem of an octu I, I gave him the pretty normal loadout yeah Grandmaster Nemesis Dread Knight, gave him the teleporter because why not? Pretty standard, yeah. Gave him silencer, psi cannon, sword, servant of the throne, the classic. Yeah, like sometimes you give a hammer instead of a sword, but like, you know. The first box, I use the strike squad as a strike squad. I gave one a psi cannon because why not? It could be a silencer. I don't care. Yeah. The others all just have swords. And then for the five paladins, I did three paladins. Uh, I just gave them all swords. I was lazy. Yeah, I don't know what other options it comes with. I remember it comes with awkwardly few of a couple options, so I played it safe because I didn't want to be wrong. Yeah, because like I think there's only like one or two Felchin sets. I actually think there's only like one hammer per five man. Yeah, there's ways to convert hammers and stuff when you get in. Don't worry, you'll have more than you think you do. Anyway, uh, and then I did an apothecary and a paladin ancient. 
So there's my five paladins is the two characters and three paladins. Don't really like paladin ancients, but fine. I don't like the paladin ancient, but it's awkward to have four paladins instead of min squad. It is. And I'd rather just have it done because at some point you're going to want an ancient in your collection. So why not just be done with it? Yeah. And having the apothecary is nice as well. And yeah, yeah, I see what you're doing. And then that's the first start collecting. And then we go through again. I don't even use the librarian on the next two sets. We're pocketing the librarians. Okay. I did the next five as just five Terminators. I gave them halberds because why not? Sure. And I gave them a psi cannon on one of them. I gave one a warding staff. You know, pretty standard loadout. I, I actually do like warding staff. In a, in a five man, like a three, like whatever. But like in a five man, you're like, yeah, I can use that stratagem now. Exactly. And then I just did Nemesis Dread loaded out the same way as the Grandmaster. And you're going to do the same on the third one. No, the third one I actually did <laughs> slightly different. I, I didn't try to min-max this. I was like, if you were building this as like your first army, you'll probably want to use some of the options, even if they're currently not correct right fair enough yeah yeah and like the options are good enough that like it's not stupid yeah you know you're not purposefully hamstringing yourself yeah so the second set of strike marines i turned into interceptors and i gave them weeb swords because falchions are cool looking and they're actually pretty good on they're, they're good on interceptors oh uh, yeah they, it was a problem early in the codex it was a problem <laughs> it was a big problem <laughs> it's not so much anymore but it's still solid yeah so then the third kit Again, pocket the librarian. Uh, this Nem Dread I turned into Hammer, and I gave it the Incinerator instead of the Psy Cannon, just because I figured it looked cool. Whatever. It's not a perfect loadout, but who cares? It'll it'll do just fine. <laughs> I gave this set of strikes a purgation squad because we definitely have enough side cannons at this point because there's two side cannons per five. I remember this when we built your army. I do like purgation squads as an like having an option of it. Yeah, purgation squads are just really cool. Yeah, they're not particularly great at the moment, but they're not terrible either. So, so that way you, you spread out what you've got your strikes doing. Yeah, I like it. And then the rest of the Terminators, I made paladins. However, uh, one of them I turned into a Brotherhood Ancient so that you can say you've got a Paladin Ancient and a Brotherhood Ancient. It's probably a waste to do this. It really doesn't matter. It could just be a Paladin. I don't care. That I don't agree with, but it doesn't matter. So then we've got the Paladin Squad. I upgraded it at this point. Now it's got one Paladin's got a Silencer. One's got a Psy Cannon. You could make them both the same. I don't care. Spend your points how you like. Yeah, just have fun with it. Both the guys with heavy weapons also have hammers. The Paragon has a hammer. The three guys with swords are still there. And now we added a warding staff into the squad too. And this is a big paladin bomb, 360 points. Yeah, it's a paladin bomb. I like it. So you still got a, a couple dollars left over. We have 50 bucks left and we're at 1,995 points. Nice. And this is a very normal list. If you brought this to the table, I would say, cool, we're going to have a fair normal game. Yeah, it's pretty standard, which is one of the nice things about Grey Knights is honestly like you have to try to make a weird imbalanced list yeah because it's a smaller army the floor and the ceiling are closer so what what did you get for the last last little bit in our pocket we've got 50 dollars and two librarians not bad one of those librarians i highly recommend go check out one last blade if you're into the idea of starting with gray knights stefan has his chaplain in terminator armor which doesn't have an eternal model like it's one of those kits that they just make like a anniversary edition here's a chaplain and terminator armor for the next you know month you can order it for like 40 us dollars but he turned a librarian into one and it's very easy to kit bash like super easy you just need like a reaver's head which is like the worst space marine kit imaginable so they're free find <laughs> one of those online find a friend who's got a spare reaver head have him chuck it at you the important thing is it's got the skull face which is what chaplains have is a skull face you jam that in instead of the librarian's head. You toss some, like, candles from any Imperium or Chaos kit on its back instead of the book, and now it looks like a chaplain. Uh, you can mutilate the staff to look like a Crozius, or you can just slap a hammerhead instead of, you know, a Crozius head, which will look more Grey Knighty. Even if rules-wise it's still a Crozius, it'll at least look like, hey, this is a Grey Knight's chaplain, not a Space Marine chaplain we've pretended is a Grey Knight. Yeah, I actually like that idea. So that's one of the librarians. I highly recommend doing that. The second one, trade it off, sell it off, whatever, don't care. So we've got 50 bucks left, which means... We can pick up some servitors. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> sort of. 
So you've got spare fifty dollars. You can pick up literally any named character that you like. Don't waste money on uh, Drago. Drago's kit is horrendous. He's a really, really cool unit to play. His kit is fucking awful. You can kit bash your own Drago. I promise you. I hate the actual kit. Legitimately, it's not worth any money. But the unit's really cool. So Eric, how do you like Drago's sword? I fucking hate it. It honestly, it makes me not want to play Drago. And <laughs> I like. I love playing Drago, but, like, that model is so bad. But you could pick any named character, with that warning aside. (laughs) You could also, if you end up with, like, 15 bucks from that library and you've sold off, you could go up to 10 Strike Marines at $65, which means you can do whatever you want with those. You can make more Interceptors if you end up liking those. You could do a Purgation Squad. You could try out Purifiers. You could do more Strike Marines if you need more troops. You can mix and match because it's 10 per box. How much are the Termi Paladins? Uh, that box is 55 so if you get five bucks you could just add five more terminators of your choice that's actually a really good price for those yeah the strikes for 65 for 10 of them is insane value that is insane value so in either case you can do that or you could just flat out buy a razorback rhino kit if you want to waste 50 dollars. do not buy rhinos at msrp people (laughs) Uh, yeah i mean there are some insane green knight players that enjoy rhinos you could also argue buying the tech marine with servitors kit because servitors have fringe use even though they're ugly as sin and fine cast and a tech marine honestly gets a lot of use in gray knights though i recommend finding a printed one don't buy the actual tech marine the original tech marine is horrendous looking yeah it's not great uh maybe just buy a primaris tech marine because it looks a lot better i do think with some changes going on soon servitors are going to see some more use yeah, they're, they're weird backline useful units. They're just ugly as sin and aren't fun to play. Honestly, there's some really cool kit bashes and stuff like that. Again, that's... That's once you get into your collecting. Yeah, there's, there's some interesting stuff that you can do with servitors, but it's actually pretty wild how far the combat patrol makes it so that Grey Knights can do whatever they want. Yeah, Grey Knights and Custodes, unfortunately we're at two power armored factions that are hyper elite, are both very good. It makes sense. I mean, you know, if only like Thousand Sons also followed that. <laughs> so, are you ready for the weird one? Yeah, so we've got two more, right? Yeah, there's two more out of the four. All right, what do you got for a weird one? Do you know what was weirdly difficult? Space Marines. I wasn't sure. I got it there. It was harder than I thought it would be. So here's the deal for people at home wondering how I could have had a problem with this. You're thinking to yourself, Space Marines, they have like five combat patrols that are all different. They're in a start collecting literally first Warhammer 40k box with Necrons. That's a pretty good deal. Right. The problem is, outside of Combat Patrol Space Marines, which is that one famous Phobos kit that's stuck together forever because they can't pull it apart because of how the sprues were made, outside of that box, all of these other boxes are horrendous value. Their, like, general boxes are not great either. Like, Well, they did two tricks that pissed me off. One of them is... A bunch of these combat patrols come with an impulsor. As I stated previously, one impulsor is mediocre. One impulsor is one too many. No, it's 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 fine. Everyone has a use for an impulsor eventually. You're fine to have one in your collection. But the second impulsor is awful. The third one <laughs> is useless. Almost all of these, they jammed a pretty useless unit into it to jack up the price. The impulsor being the worst example. It's in multiple of these kits. And it makes duplicates really bad. The other problem is... All of them come with an upgrade sprue that just changes out the shoulder pauldron with a specific chapter shoulder pauldron and has some like generic tchotchke stuff to put on your character. So like it comes with two Blood Angels Primaris upgrade frames. They priced that into the discount. If you ignore that, these are barely discounts. Okay. They're a little better than that, depending on which one, but it's painful how bad some of the value on these are uh so that's our problem with why space brains was way harder than you would have thought it was so i did end up finding a way to get to 2000 points it's not my favorite all right what'd you do here's here's the gist of it right now this has to be ultramarines okay it should be able to be any marine because right now gilliman is tied to ultramarines but i assume he's getting the abaddon treatment where he's just going to end up as 
Imperium buffing man for 300 points. Yeah, I, I think that's a fair assumption. But right now you have to play this as Ultramarines because I had to use Gilliman to get here. Okay. So we did two combat patrols. We did Space Marines combat patrol and Dark Angels combat patrol, and we threw out the upgrade sprues. All right. I don't know what's in Dark Angels. <laughs> the Space Marine Combat Patrol comes with a Lieutenant in Phobos armor, who's not fantastic, but whatever. Everyone likes having a Lieutenant because, like, you want your Captain, your Lieutenant, your Classics. Yeah, yeah, It comes with 10 Infiltrators, but they're the easy-to-build kit, so there's no options. You can't do 5 Incursors, 5 Infiltrators. You have to do the 10 Infiltrators as they look. Right. So they've got their options. It comes with the Impulsor which I just did a pretty basic loadout for an Impulsor. Okay. It comes with three Eliminators who are easy to build, so you can't do anything fancy. It's just three Eliminators, vanilla build. Fun. It's got three Suppressors, which is the whole problem with this, of it has to be tied because of how it's on the sprue. Uh, So the Suppressors are here too. Cool unit. I really like it, but whatever. That's the first Combat Patrol. Second Combat Patrol is Dark Angels, which gives you a Primaris Chaplain on foot. Unfortunately, I know it's not on bike. Five generic Intercessors, which is one of the most malign garbage units in Space Marines. I'm aware you all hate Intercessors and prefer Assault Intercessors, but whatever. It has a Redemptor Dreadnought, which is the real redeeming quality here, instead of a useless second Impulsor. That is nice, yeah. And it has three Inceptors, which from looking at the sprues on the website are the full kit, meaning you can build them as plasma. Okay. So I did plasma, even though I know right now technically it's probably better to do audible gun, but whatever. It doesn't matter. I did plasma. That burned $300. We've got 200 left, and we have a lot of points to make up still. Yeah, it sounds like it. Unfortunately, we had to buy Gilliman immediately, which I believe is $65. But, I mean, he's a lot of points, and he's kind of cool. 300 points. Great model. Uh, it's just yeah. unfortunate that right now, rules-wise, that means this is an Ultramarines list. And then we're going to do something that will make certain Space Marine players cringe. We're going to buy a box of Hellblasters. Here's the fun trick. Hellblasters is a $60 kit. Hellblasters are wildly overpriced right now. Oh my god. <laughs> A 10-man Hellblaster squad who kill themselves when they roll ones is 330 points. Wow. Don't roll ones. Easy. <laughs> That's about right. <laughs> so we're going to actually make decent use in this list of Hellblasters because we're going to keep them with Gilliman, get the re-roll ones, all that jazz. At which point it's like, yeah, don't roll ones. Okay. Yeah. So they're... they're <laughs> You're still going to have a couple die every game and wonder why these things cost so much, but that's what they cost. I am not doing a second set of Hellblasters to really fudge the stuff in my favor. Like, you could technically remove Gilliman, put in 20 Hellblasters instead of 10. That's a bit. And end up with more money and more points. So, like, you end up having more room to play with what you want in your list, but... You have 20 Hellblasters. And, like, you wouldn't have Gilman to, like, stop them from blowing themselves up. <laughs> okay. I, 10 I can accept with Gilman. Like, we're, we've got, like, some synergies going on as we're kind of doing it. It's kind of cool. Sure. So we are now sitting at 1,840-ish points with $75 left. So you can basically choose anything you want at this point as long as it's under $75 and is at least, like, 150 points or 140 points so like you could just get intercessors assault intercessors right you could because this is a pretty backline heavy ultramarine shooting army right now i just threw eradicators in there you could throw in whatever you like we're at 480 dollars right now done you you can replace them with a couple different options if you go this route it sucks that you're tied into ultramarines right now you can still make this an honorable mention close if you remove gilliman put a captain in his place you've got like minus 170 points to make up and you've got an extra 20 dollars in your pocket yeah this is probably a better way to build this army by doing that so that you can be whatever you want but you're gonna be over my line this is how we got to my line. And I think that's not the worst starting point. No, it's it's a fine ultramarine army. And obviously there are starting points below 2,000 points. You could start with just a combat patrol and be quite happy for a while. Right, right, right. Okay, that's not too bad. It's not too bad. But uh, you've got one more? Yeah. Do you care to guess? I, I don't know. Okay, it's Necrons. Is it? How much does Silent King cost? <laughs> I couldn't fit Silent King in this list, Eric. What? I want you to do some math with me here. Silent King is 400 points. Yeah. Silent King is $160. Ooh. 
Silent King only has a ratio of 2.5 points per dollar, meaning if you add him to a list, you need to add something that is better points per dollar than four to make up for the fact that he costs so much. All of the big Chungus units, Magnus, Mortarian, Silent King, etc., are all up at that cap of like 160 to 170 dollars. Ouch. So, Silent King didn't make the list. I committed a crime. <laughs> okay. So I got Necrons to 2,000 points for $500, but at what cost? So the the combat patrols got... The combat patrol is bad, but I did end up needing to use it just for money reasons. Because it's, it's got the Scythe? Doom Scythe, or you can do Night Scythe. I did Doom Scythe, but it doesn't matter. They're both pretty bad. Then it's got three of the stupid fly things. Three, three Tomb Blades, which are also bad, yeah. Is it Immortals? It is... Two five-man squads of immortals that can also be death marks. It's however you choose okay. to build it. I did all immortals because death marks are horrendously awful. What does it have for its like character thing? The character is just an overlord on foot. Specifically, technically, WYSIWYG, it would be with the scythe and the res orb. So that's what I did for that. That's not great. No. <laughs> Okay. I believe it was purposely made that way to accent Indominus, which again was a timed box that is no longer available, but the bits of it are all over the internet for cheap. Do not buy MSRP. Right. Okay, so trying to think what else. How much do arcs cost? Nope, nope, nope. We don't have money for that. So here's how I did it. There is an intro box to 40k Oh. that has Necrons versus Space Marines. The Space Marine half of it is somewhat arguable. We're buying the $100 box. We end up with these Space Marines left over to go trade to that Space Marine player so that they don't have to buy Gilliman. <laughs> this is why no one buys everything at MSRP, guys. Uh, we're going to be buying the, the Necron half, and unfortunately it comes with a second Overlord. It's not great. This one is the Tachyon Arrow and Glaive version. This box also comes with 10 Warriors three scarabs because they're part of the warrior sprue and three scorpec destroyers and a plasma scythe which is always with them it's not bad so we're at 250 dollars burn technically 249 dollars burn we have a lot of ground to make up still yeah i was like we don't really have an army we've got stuff so so let's do the non-embarrassing thing first there is the canoptic doomstalker is 130 points it's not as good as a doomsday arc but it's cheap i think it's a $42 kit or something. It's an interesting model, I guess. I like it. I really do like them. I like them better than the fucking rib cage. I do not like arcs. I like arcs. I think they're cool. I generally don't like the infantry portion of Necrons as a Necron player, but anyway. So the Canoptic Doomstalker, that's the like tall four-leg walker. With the big gun on his head. Yeah, I do like it, and it does give me some nostalgia to the StarCraft II unit that's basically the same, the Colossus. So I then am going to waste $115. Oh, uh, because it works out pretty well for actually feeding our points. It's not my favorite thing to spend this on. You get, it's the Necron Royal Court. No idea what that is. I know. It's <laughs> it's the part of Indominus that was only in Indominus. All right. It's the Scorpec Lord, the Plasmancer, two Crypto Thralls, and the Canoptic Reanimator. And they like, they still sell that? It's sold together as like, a, that's how they tend to do those like timed boxes after release is overprice the parts that were exclusive to that box. Yeah. There's a Space Marine equivalent, but it's horrible. So we did not buy that. All right. All right. That burned up most of our money. So I have very little money left to play with. Yeah. It doesn't sound particularly great. Eric, I need about 620 points. All right. I'm going to buy fine cast. Oh, <laughs> fuck off. <laughs> That doesn't count. We have Catan Shard of the Nightbringer and Catan Shard of the Deceiver here in the store for $90, which is under our budget. Fucking hell. I didn't even think of the Catan. I mean, I like, know you didn't. That makes sense. Are you ready for what's going to happen, though? So they have pretty dated models. They're both 300 or more points. They're both $45. Their models are fine cast, so they are a crime. Do not purchase them. However, we have a rumor engine that looks a hell of a lot like Nightbringer Scythe, 
but in like modern, beautiful looks. So it's very likely that next year we're going to get a Catan Shard of the Nightbringer. Yeah, but it's going to be expensive like the Void Dragon. Void Dragon's $115 for the exact same. He's cheaper point-wise than the $45 Nightbringer. Yeah, and and looks way, 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 way cooler. Sure he does, <laughs> but he's $115. Yeah. There's a reason I didn't pick him and I picked the two that are ugly as sin. Okay. So we bought the Banana Man and the Man with the Banana Scythe. I don't approve of this shenanigans. I don't either, but they're actually actually like okay there's no reason other than their models are ugly to ban them like it's not like buying a stompa <laughs> Fair. like nightbringer has argument for why you would play him yes deceiver is the worst of the katans but he's casually fine deceiver is a bit of a stretch but i can accept it i can accept it as like a, i think katans are cool i want to play the katans but i have a budget and i'm not gonna spend 150 dollars on void dragon so i'll buy deceiver and nightbringer fair Okay. So that that got us $499 because it turns out the Doomstalker was $45. I just double checked. $499 for what is essentially just shy of 2,000 points. Oh, it's not even 2K? It's it's like 1990 something. Oh, okay. So it, it's it's a 2K list. It's just you're missing some upgrade just because like point wise that, that happens. Yeah. And, and this is assuming you take some options on the Tomb Blades. You could juggle them around, whatever. Yeah. I'm not sure I particularly like that list, but it's not awful. It's rough, but that's where we're at with the price of 40K models. Yeah. So So let's take a moment to wrap up here and talk about why this is so rough. Like, what led us to the fact that, for some reason, models are now way more expensive than when we started essentially three years ago now? Yeah, so combat patrols. Combat patrols is the big problem. Yeah. So combat patrols was a great idea because start collectings had an issue. You had good start collectings, like Chaos Space Marines. It was like 700 points for 90 US dollars MSRP, and you could get it cheaper online. And like, it wasn't just like wasted points. It was some solid. It was good. I would buy two of them if I was starting CSM. Yeah. Then you had the problem of Slanesh or <laughs> Astra Militarum, where you had trouble scraping 300 points for that same $90. Right. So the idea was combat patrols target 500 points and make it so that they're all balanced. So when two new people buy a combat patrol to start playing, they're on mostly equal footing. It's a great, it honestly is a great idea because, you know, two people are like, hey, we want to start playing Warhammer. Here's two boxes. You each build one and play against it and it's not a stomp. Cool. Here's the problem, though. What ended up happening is for most armies that were elite and often ended up with too many points per dollar in a start collecting box, all they did was upcharge it from 90 US dollars to a hundred and fifty dollars. Yeah, it's like almost double. <laughs> <laughs> the Chaos Space Marine start collecting was a better value, better units, more points than the $150 combat patrol box. Yeah, that's it sucks because like like we said, you know, it's it's a good idea to do that kind of thing. And you can't use the argument of, oh, well at least it solved the problem with like Admech because obviously now you finally get 500 points of Admech in a oh it still barely scrapes 300 points if you buy every option. That is honestly the big miss. Any of the combat patrols that don't get to 500 or, you know, 480, 490, like what, you know. Death Guard not being legal as a patrol in the first place and having a name character and all the other issues with that piece of trash. Oof. So, like, if the idea is supposed to be two people can buy these boxes, build them, and play against each other and have a good, reasonably fair time, they've failed that mark. Yes. Pretty miserably. And, like, it, it is one thing to have, like, some armies that are elites are going to have, oh, if you take these options, it's going to be more points. To be honest, that's very rare now. It's basically Grey Knights, because you're old Marines, still has <laughs> that. When you get primaris sized and all of your kits no longer have options, you use the entire sprue making your kit. It's going to be less. You're not going to be 800 points. You're going to be 430 points. Oof. Yeah, like, it's fine to have some that go a bit over, but, like, under by, like, a noticeable amount, it's not great. Or they're just trash. Like, obviously the idea is 
two people should be able to grab one off the shelf and play a good fair game, right? Yeah. Points aside, there is no fucking way in a million years you take Combat Patrol Necrons or Combat Patrol Admech and you play it against a generic decent Combat Patrol. Just play it against the Chaos Demons one, the Space Marine one, the Drakari one, the Orc one, normal ones, right? You play them against those, these would get shredded. Especially if you start picking at random and not like building the best unit in the box. Like if you accidentally made death marks, good fucking god. <laughs> Yeah, there's some problems. And like, it's tough because just generally models have gotten more expensive, which does suck. So there's been three price hikes since 2020. It's been a bit much. And there's a a secret sauce that we can get to on these price hikes. This is very purposeful. They're, They're not just, oh, woe is us. Or sorry, guys, we didn't want a price hike, but inflation happened, right? Because very suspiciously... They have found the cap is $170. They have not moved the Knight Tyrant from that. All the Knights are now $170. All of the other giant named characters are just trying to push up to that $170 mark because they realize through some market research stuff that the second you hit $175, that rounds up to $200 in people's heads. And they go, $200 for a plastic children's toy? Are you fucking insane? Yeah, there absolutely is that type of psychological thing going on there it's the same reason of why like gas prices are 0.99 they're always yeah they the super scummy it's always a cent higher than it says it is that whole thing it works like it, it psychologically does work and back to your last point this was early in the episode you asked me are we doing this in pounds or dollars yeah because you and i both know this fact (laughs) <laughs> currently great britain wonderful awesome britain is uh having rolling blackouts and is barely a country something about brexit yeah something about terrible choices and reaping what you sow london bin knife dot png <laughs> <laughs> so uh wonderful britain is in such good shape that the pound is down to only a buck 20 us something like that yeah conveniently the prices of us warhammer models was decided compared to the pound in the mid 90s (laughs) when the pound was a lot more so they upped the us prices twice while the pound decreased in value compared to it by large numbers currently the same kit if a UK person buys it in pounds and a US person buys it in dollars. And we convert so that we're both buying in the same currency. Yeah, yeah. There is a 38% burger tax. I understand if there was like a 15%, I get it, international, you, you got to deal with tariff and all that. Uh, yeah. But there is not a 40% tariff between countries. I can tell you this as someone who works for an international company. It, definitely not between Britain and the US. Yeah, especially not like, those countries. So, yeah, it, it sucks. It, it really does. Yeah, even with all the price increases, just for those wondering at home, I did some quick math. The majority of factions, if we did this at 414 pounds, which is currently 500 US dollars, the vast majority of armies are purchasable at MSRP still for $500 for 2,000 points. Okay. So it's only like really the ones that like fail miserably at Combat Patrol and... The the AdMac, the IG, the... Yeah, things that just are awful. Okay. Gene Stealer, who I forgot to even mention, but they're, they're way out there. They, you ain't doing Gene Stealer calls for 500. Uh, Completely forgot about those yet again. So, I mean, it is nice to know that if you're in Britain, you can get most armies for about $500. You just can't get electricity. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you're not wrong it's a good thing this is an analog game (laughs) exactly you can use candles to paint (laughs) so on on that wonderful note these episodes are very fun to make but this takes a very long time to create there's a lot of work that went into this there's a lot more work after i say these words that has to be done by an editor and then again to videoify it so that you can all watch it on the youtubes if you prefer please do us a favor If you stuck through this and were entertained and occasionally offended by us making fun of you personally, good. (laughs) Take a moment, give us the YouTube pleasantries and all that. Share us with friends. Try our other content. 
There's a bunch of fun stuff. I'm not always so negative, though I often am. Uh, we try to do more upbeat, fun subjects for the most part. This one just kind of failed, which led to this, and it's kind of an interesting look in that way. Yeah, it is kind of interesting of, like, the expectation being, oh, yeah, even the ones that, like, probably aren't that close, there's more, like, honor roll mentions than there would have been. Yeah. Uh, so a bit of a downer, but... So do all that for us. Help us out. Thank you so much, and thank you to all the patrons. I know you guys help us constantly. Keep that up. But that is enough of us. Let's get out of here for the week. Sounds good. <laughs>